Hey guys, and welcome back to Tell Samira. So, one thing I was thinking about with dysfunctional families or even dysfunctional friendships is that you're always going to have people who know you have been abused or mistreated, but they always want to play it safe or want to be on the fence, meaning they're like, well, there's always two sides of the story. And yeah, I may have saw this person do something mean to you, but I don't know what happened before. You know, so I can see this happening if these family or friends have not been around you and that abusive other per toxic person, if they haven't been around you a lot. Because these dysfunctional people can actually be very tricky and they can, um, they're very charismatic and outgoing and people are attracted to their personalities and they can, um, you know, the life of the party and things like that. So I can see if the, the, um, the, the non-negative, I guess you call them, family, friends are confused because they're not around a lot and all they see is the outgoing, charismatic dysfunctional person but you know behind um closed doors that that dysfunctional person is treating you all type of hellish ways and you try to work with them and nothing is happening good so i'm talking about these family members and these friends who've been around for years and they don't see you behaving toxic in no way all they see is you is just standing up for yourself you probably not even cussing a person now you're not hitting a person you're not going bad you're not doing anything anything crazy but they see this person yelling at you talking down to you telling your business trying to embarrass you in front of people they see this every time they're around but for some reason and i don't know what it is they're always like um well i just don't know i just don't know or if you're telling them the reason let, let's say if you did finally uh go off and go bad spaz out or whatever and you're telling them why then they're just like well i just don't know i just don't know you know what i used to tolerate that but i'm not in a point where i tolerate that now if you've been around enough and you know how this person has treated me or is treating me, and I don't have the dysfunctional no more because I, I don't do that. But if you've been, or let's just say, if you're going through it now, and this person, they already know all the hell you've been going through, and they're still like, I just don't know. You know what? For me, if you can, get away from that type of person. Because my thing is, I need people in my life that's solid. I don't need nobody that's going back with my enemy. And because if the thing is, if they not if they not fully there for me, I don't know what they saying to the other person that's treating me like crap. They could be um, in cahoots with them. They could be a freaking flying monkey coming back to me trying to figure out what I'm saying, what I'm doing to go back to report to somebody else. I don't need that happening. I had somebody tell me that before. Um, this was a while ago, talking to somebody about the narcissist. And then, I'll, and I've been talking to this person, this um, so-called neutral person who know, know me and the narcissist. And then eventually, and I wasn't even talking bad about the narcissist. But the neutral person ends up telling me, oh, yeah, I'm best friends with the narcissist. And I'm thinking, dang, how stupid was I? You know, you can be telling, and this is why I'm saying that it's a good habit to stop always talking about the narcissist and your trauma because you don't know who knows who and who's clicked up with who. So even though I wasn't talking bad about this narcissist, this flying freaking monkey who I determined was a flying monkey after some years is probably was probably going back whatever I was just saying about my life giving it to the narcissist because if that's your best friend I'm not your best friend you ain't never called me your best friend I'm assuming you got more loyalty to that person so you reporting back on me forget that life is too short to be dealing with people who ain't got no loyalty to me and people may think oh it's petty you making a person choose size I don't care I'll be petty because you're not gonna be with me and acting like you don't see the hell that's going on through me that's to me, 
And that's one reason I had to cut some people off. You know, I had um, someone around me um, for years, and I think I told this before. I was, this is when I was really going from friendship to friendship that was just toxic and toxic. And every time I'm telling this one, this one friend I had, like, oh, this happened. Cause I'm, cause at the time, very insecure. And I want to make sure I wasn't treating people wrong. Am I making too much of this? And I'm always telling this person, hey, this happened, this happened. And they're like, oh, no, nah, that's nothing. And Samira, oh, you're making a big deal. Oh, this happened at the job. They're doing me like this, blah, 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 blah. Because you know, if you've been, um, raised by these toxic um dysfunctional families you probably got a history of bad jobs where you got narc employee i mean not narc narcissistic and uh co-workers supervisors ceos because it's like if until you heal and deal and stand up to that it's like god keep <laughs> allowing you to be everywhere where these narcissists are and somebody told me it's only 10 percent of the population i'm like well i did i meet the whole percent 10 percent of the narcissists in the whole world because i feel like i've experienced it a lot but i think that's god's way of like hey you gotta toughen up i'm gonna keep putting you around these people until you learn how to stop acting weak and stand up for yourself and fight back because you, you ain't been given a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind so yeah so anyway this um friend is always like oh no samaya you you know you're making too much of it but then finally one day after years of knowing this person they're finally like oh samaya you stick around and bear relationships too much and blah 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 you know you do and i'm like how that has that the case in years you've been gaslighting me and i didn't say this to the person i just knew oh, okay yeah well, this friendship is over you know um how Am I not dealing with stuff? And this person for years has been gaslighting me, telling me that basically I was in the wrong. And always taking other people's side, even though she ain't know them. But see, this is the game that people play. So forget that. You Either you on my side or you or you on the other person's side. But you can't play the game and play, and play both sides. You're going to have to freaking pick a side with me. If you haven't already liked this um, video, go ahead and like and subscribe. You want to book a session with me, that information is down in the description. Check out my books on Amazon. I should have worn a curtain, a novella, parts one and two, and also Road to Malevolence. You can get signed copies from me if you'd like. Uh, send me an email, tell Samira123 at Gmail. Again, tell Samira123 at Gmail. Uh, and also share this video if it's resonating with you. So, yeah. Another situation that I had, and I tell you, I got dysfunctional uh, stories for days <laughs> that I can say of what happened, of what happened before. But yeah, another situation. I don't know why I was crazy. I the the um, narcissist, the friend that I used to stay with. After I left her place and stopped dealing with with her. Her sister, and see, I should have known this. Somebody's sister, of course, they ain't got no allegiance to me. They got allegiance to whoever their their family member is. So she was calling me, and I should have known something because she wasn't even calling me when I stayed with her sister. But anyway, she calling me, and she's like, oh, but what happened? Y'all used to be so cool and everything like this. And I'm telling her what happened, and she's like, oh, it just seems like, you know, she's concerned about you, and I don't know her to be that type of person. Person and blah blah blah. I'm like, well, yeah, because you weren't the targeted person that she was doing that with. I'm like, Sh of course, she don't do that, and narcissists don't do that with everybody. They pick people that they think they can get away with it, or they do get away with it, or whatever, like that. Because I was too forgiving in, in that friendship, and that's how they target people. You're too forgiving, always accepting them back with no type of change behavior and thinking that something is different when really it's a vicious, evil cycle just going round and round. They're nice to you, then it's you walking on eggshells, then they explode. Nice to you, walking on eggshells, explode, cycle, 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 and it don't stop until some either they discard you or you discard them. So anyway, she's asking me and I'm like justifying myself. This is why I'm not being on justifying myself anymore because these people, they are going to think what they're going to think. They're going to, they're not, they want to, they're just going to take in what they take in. And if they have a thought about how something is, they're going to hold on to that no matter what you say and do. So she's all like, no, no, I don't think my sister, blah, blah, blah. And then like after two hours of just my, justifying myself on the phone, 
she was like, um, well, honestly, you're not the first one to say this about my sister. Somebody else said that. And I'm like, are you for real? So uh, this all this time on this phone, she knew good and well her sister was a freaking narcissist because her sister had these relationships with people before and they have come back and told her. But she wanted to pretend with me that she didn't know. So that's what I mean about playing on the fence. So she still wanted to call me and wanted to, of course, talk to her sister. It's her sister. But I'm like, no, I cut off all ties with her, blocked her number and whatever, because no, you're not going to have an allegiance with me and with your sister because you have chosen your sister you have not chosen me which is understandable because that's your sister her sister but i'm not gonna allow her to come back to my life why because you know what they do she eventually was gonna tell her, her the her narc sister that she been talking to me what i got going on in my life where i'm living where i'm working what i'm doing no and you know the narc wants to keep tabs on you to find out if your life is going to hell without them. They want to know to get some kind of, they want to gloat and be happy if something bad happening to you. No, I'm not about to keep allowing this person into my life. For what? And then just like the um, person, like I said, a few people in my family who have reached out to me this year about situations like with my mom. Like I said, these people, even though I'm not close to these family family members, but anytime they would come around our fam um come around my um, me and my mother and my sisters or whatever, it was always something negative about how I was being treated. These people saw what was going on or whatever. And what I say, and I don't expect them to do anything because truthfully, what can you really do with somebody? Um, I think maybe at one point I wish they had done something. But as I look back on it, like, what can you really do if somebody is just verbally abusing their kids? I mean, you can report it to Child Protective Services. Nothing's going to happen. How I know I deal with Child Protective Services. You know, they want to see some type of abuse where it's actually evident. You know, bruises and scars and things like that. So there would would have been nothing that my family members could have really done about the verbal abuse, you know, that I was going through, nothing. You know, then it's hard to jump into somebody's issues with their kids because you risk getting alienated or cussed out or told, mind your business. You know, what can you really do? But the problem that I have is that the people who reached out to me, who've seen it, they started telling me different stories that they remember. And I didn't ask them for this. Um, stories they remember of me and my mother growing up, how I was um, basically the scapegoat while the uh, one other child was put on a pedestal and I wasn't treated fair. They telling me all these stories. Some stuff I didn't even realize that they knew. But then, it, then but when they ended, it's like, well... But there's always two sides of a story. Oh, I I wasn't there for everything. Oh, but I really don't know. You know, it's like, bruh, you've been around all these years. You heard other people talking about what was going on. You witnessed it there. What do you mean you don't know? You know? So it's like, no. Either you know or you know, don't know. Okay, you don't know? Okay, well, blocked. Don't call me again because I need because I and, and it's not that and, and I want to say this to be clear because I do not want people thinking that I'm starting these conversations about narcissistic mother and trying to get people to identify and believe me. I am not there anymore. I say that to be clear because these people came to me because they heard my mother was sick. So they had come to me about this and this is the only reason the conversation was going because other than that like i said other than with you guys i'm not talking about this because when you're continuously talking about narcissism trying to get people to believe and agree with you it you are going to put a target on yourself it's being someone that's possible possibly seen as petty someone seen as childish you need to move on you need to grow up and i'm not saying that these are things are true i'm just saying from experience that this is how 
people are looking at you that something is wrong with you because you're alienated from your parents. You know, other abusers see that. And when you're talking about, I've been abused, I've been abused. I'm not making fun of you. But I'm just saying how you may look to other abusers. They're like, oh, you've been abused before? Great. That shows me you can be abused again. Oh, you tolerated abuse for 10 years? I can probably abuse you for eight. You know, so we're like oh, this bleeding heart. I got to let you know, see my wounds, trauma bond, identify with me. I've been hurt. Help me. Be safe with me. Be nice to me. Don't you hurt me too? No, you're putting a target on your head. So these people are not going to understand you. So I was, I answered the phone call because they called. Now, and so the thing is, is that because I have had this conversation with these people before, I did try to explain. And I'm not going to lie. I tried to explain a little bit of what was going on. Like, hey, blah, blah, blah. No, we don't talk because it is. But basically, they are. these people already knew this. But I wasn't going into no justification because they already know. Come on. So anyway, they're like, um, yeah, well, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, you, you know. Um, basically forgiveness, move on, you know, for, forget that. Because what I know is this, if somebody, can't nobody be close to me if they talking to me about some forgiveness and what I need to do and move on. Because the thing is, is they trying to set, these people on the fence is trying to set you up for further abuse. They also trying to make you doubt yourself. Like, am I, am I being too hard? Should, should, should I forgive? Am I making a mistake in my judgment? No, you're not making a mistake in your judgment. You did what's best for you you know if i the people that's gonna be in my corner is gonna be people who if i say forget this person they like yeah forget that person too and that's just how that's just how i am because i don't first off i don't do a whole bunch of friends i used to do that when i was younger and then as i got older like in my 30s i was all upset like man i should have more friends and why don't i have more friends now i'm like man forget that because people ain't really solid. I don't want you around me telling me that I need to forgive somebody that um, treated me like crap. And for, first of all, for me, this whole thing with the forgiveness is crazy because forgiveness is a personal thing. And that's, to me, a God thing. Nobody should be walking around, have you forgiven? Have you forgiven? Are you the most high God? If I forgive or if I don't forgive, it ain't your problem. Like, I am not created in your image. And at the end of the day, when I stand before God, I ain't standing before you. I'm standing before God. So that's a me and a God issue about forgiveness. And first off, people want to throw out the forgiveness and misinterpret in the Bible. If you if you can't just take one scripture and think that you just going to land there and that's the be all. You it's you got to take the other scriptures that's talking about that same topic to look at it all to get an understanding. And my thing is, if a person has not come to me and they ain't asked for forgiveness, I don't have to forgive this person. This person has not made any conscious decision to come to me and try to make any Thing right and has not acknowledged that they've done anything wrong what am I to forgive if they have not asked for it you know people are just throwing around this dumb stuff and it's like no if you if you're telling me this and you're not acknowledging what I've been through or if you're halfway acknowledging maybe you did maybe you did I don't know two sides whatever no I don't need you around me making me second guess myself that's gaslighting has happened to me mostly all my life until you know I cut off the the narc mom and everything like that but that has happened to me for most of my life i'll say i don't need people around me that's not fully in my corner that's trying to make me um second guess myself now i do want people around me that if i'm doing something wrong that they don't feel like they gotta walk on eggshells and they can address it and we can talk about that thing but no I, I know and you know what's right for yourself. You you know um, there's like that that instinct with us in, in us the Holy Spirit the gut instincts whatever it's called that's letting you know 
what's right and what's wrong. But we've been trained, especially if you come from these dysfunctional families, we've been trained that don't listen to that because your parents were probably told you, oh, your feelings are wrong. Shut up crying, you know, or you shouldn't be sad. You shouldn't be mad. You should be thankful you have me as your parent. You should be thankful I've done this for you or if anybody other, other child would love to be in your shoes, would love to live here. So everything that you've ever thought or felt was always invalidated. Why continue to put people in your life that's invalidating you, making you think that you don't have the um, proper discernment to understand who is for you and who is not for you? You got to keep yourself. You got to keep yourself um, at a place of peace. And in order to do that, you got to have people that's t totally and fully supporting you. Why waste your time with people that's not? You've already spent probably most of your life with people who was not fully in your corner. For people who treated you dirty and who um, rewarded you evil for the good that you've given them. You ain't got time for that. So it's like, hex, no. Oh, okay, you friends were my enemy. Get out of my face. I don't want nothing to do with you. And I don't have to tell them that i can just block them on social media block their phone number now okay because by them pretending they have not made a choice no they've already made a choice and so that's why i say now or, or as a way to protect myself these people that's calling me messaging messaging me through messenger and this is how messy it is because you know it ain't no real relationship they didn't even got my phone number you know, so unless they go through messenger. So it's like, no, do not con do not contact me. Either it's like if you want to talk about that stuff from the past, because I don't need to bring it up. Either you 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 acknowledge what you what you saw. You know, and then if you if you got any kind of craziness about how you think I could have been wrong and this and this, no, get out of my life because I ain't got time for you. So let me know what y'all think down in the comment section. Please don't forget to like and um, to subscribe to this video and have a good week. Bye.